Hey guys, how are you? Jeremy Nelson here. I'm excited to talk to you today about the anointing of healing and about the ministry of Jesus. And listen, we are starting a five-part series that we're going to do where I'm going to break down uh, the healing anointing. We're going to break down the different ways that the Lord heals. And hopefully what the goal is, is to equip you guys to begin to be able to walk out the things of God and to manifest the kingdom everywhere that you go. And so listen, Listen, first thing I want to do though is I want to uh, look at the word and in Matthew, uh, you know, chapter 9, verse 35, it, it kind of gives us a synopsis of the ministry of Jesus. And I want you guys to see something because there's a lot of people, um, you know, that, that, are preaching the gospel, but it's not exactly the same gospel as the way that Jesus preached it. And so one of the things that I love is that Jesus is the blueprint. And so if we want to uh, imitate anybody, if we want to follow after anybody's leading, how many know that's Christ? And so uh, look, look at this. It says here in Matthew chapter 9, starting in verse 35, it says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now I want to say something here. God is about to harvest the harvesters on the earth and he's looking for people that are going to live and move and uh, manifest the things of God on the earth just like Jesus did. Listen, the book of Colossians tells us that Jesus was the express image of the invisible God. See, he made God who was invisible to many around him visible through the manifestation of miracles, signs, and wonders as well as healings. And and, and so I, I want to look at that because it says here in the scriptures that, that Jesus went about um, you know teaching and preaching in the synagogues and and everywhere that he went in every village, it says that he taught the gospel of the kingdom and healed every sickness and every disease among the people. And so listen, I want to just say this. Why do we need miracles? Why do we need healings when it comes to uh, the gospel that we preach? I'll tell you why. Because it gives us a voice with the world. It gives us a voice um, you know, with people that, that are maybe skeptical and don't really know or, or even believe that Jesus is real. Listen, the one thing that I love about Jesus is the Bible tells us that in the Great Commission, you know, um, that God confirmed his word working with them and signs and wonders and miracles were released. And, you know, Jesus told his disciples, he said, that, you know, um, go into all the world and preach the good news of the kingdom of God. And, and he, he went on and he, he said this, those who believe in my name will cast out demons and they'll lay their hands on the sick and they'll recover. We'll look at that a little bit later in one of the other sessions. But I want to just say this is that Jesus commissioned the church to be a voice and to release the same anointing that he released. And everywhere Jesus went, everywhere he taught, everywhere he preached, you'll never see a separation between his preaching, his teaching, and some sort of demonstration of his power. And uh, I love in Acts chapter 4, you know, the... Um, the early church gets baptized with the Holy Ghost and power and, and all of a sudden they start to see amazing miracles. In fact, they pray for that man at the gate, uh, you know, in, in Acts chapter 3 and, and at the temple gate and he gets up lame from, uh, you know, his birth and, and, and all of a sudden persecution happens and the, the Pharisees tell, you know, uh, Peter and John, do not preach in the name of Jesus again and I love their boldness. See, when we see the power of God, boldness comes. They looked at them and said, you judge for yourself which is right right for us to listen to you or to listen to God. And, and, and the Bible says that uh, the Pharisees, you know, uh, they, they saw the boldness of Peter and John and, and they took note that they were unschooled untrained uh, men, but yet that they had been with Jesus. One of the things the Bible says is that the Pharisees took note that these were unschooled, untrained men and that they had been with Jesus. And I want to say something. When you move in the power of God, people will begin to take notice of the fact that uh, what you're saying is real. And, and what's amazing is that the disciples actually go back to the way, the church, and in Acts chapter 4, they cry out to God and they say, Lord, look at their threats. 
talking about the Pharisees, talking about the world, talking about uh, the religious people of their day. And they say, Lord, look at their threats. And, and then here was their prayer. Stretch forth your hand that you may heal in the name of your holy servant, Jesus, that we might speak your word with all boldness. And the Bible tells us that the place where they were meeting began to shake under the power of God and that they were all filled with boldness and they all began to proclaim his word with, with great authority and great power. And, and, and so listen, if the early church had to cry out for the power of God and they were believing that the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the healings were one of the greatest keys to be a voice to the world around them and to break the power of religion, then what makes our day different than that day? See, I'm excited because I believe there's a whole generation generation who's coming who are going to be free of religion. They're going to be free of, uh, you know, the, the spirit of this age. And they're going to be full of the power of God. They're going to be full of signs and wonders and miracles. And just like Jesus, listen, everywhere they go, they're going to, uh, they're going to bring the teachings and the preachings of Christ. You know, most of the time, Jesus uh, was just doing miracles. He would just go into a village. A blind person would see. He would go into a place and, and uh, the deaf, you know, would start to heal uh, here. And, and, and they would be healed, you know, every, everywhere he he went, God was confirming his message with signs and wonders that followed him. And so listen, I want to just say this, what signs and wonders are following you? And if they're not following you, listen, God wants them to follow you. And that's why we're doing this video. We're, we're wanting to bring language to just give people keys so they can be equipped to be confident, to be bold, to begin to release the power of God just like Jesus. And, um, and, and you know, one of the other things that I really believe God wants to do is he wants to release his love on the earth. And here's uh, what I'm talking about is that, um, that miracles, signs, and wonders are a vehicle to get the love of God to people. And I'll never forget one time I was in England. I was ministering there. Uh, you know, I was at a, a good friend of mine's church, um, you know, over in Dudley, England. We were ministering uh, and revival meetings and I'll never forget that one night there was this uh, um, woman that came up that I prayed for. I actually got a word of knowledge. I said there was somebody here who's in the meeting that had been in a car accident and as a result there was broken bones and things that were destroyed in this accident. And so uh, the, the doctors had to put, uh, you know, metal in your body. And so this woman comes up probably in her mid-60s. And sure enough, she was in a car accident. She had a metal rod in her hip. And, um, you know, they replaced that hip. And, and, and so what was interesting about it was this, is that... You know, I, I looked at this woman and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, if you dance with her, I'll heal her. How many know that's weird? Uh, you know, that, that's something that seems a little strange. But how many know that Jesus was radically obedient to the Father? I mean, listen, he was so radically obedient that uh, he would do whatever God said, John 5, 19. And that's one of the keys that we're going to dive into later on in these teachings um, is, is the key of radical obedience. What it does is it opens up the heavens and it manifests the kingdom of God. And, and so listen, I, I've just I mean, Jesus spit in some mud, put it in a, uh, a guy's eyes, you know, and the guy got healed. How many know that some people would say, well, that was weird. Well, listen, that was Jesus. And so uh, you got to understand it's not about a method. It's not about um, a, a formula because it's about relationship. And so here I am. I'm with this woman in front of about 400 people. And the Lord says, if you dance with her, I'll heal her. And so I said, hey, this might sound really weird to you, but um, I feel like God says that if I dance with you, he'll heal you. And she was like old enough to be my grandmother. And, and I said, can we, you know, can we do that? And she laughed and smiled and said, yes. And I took her by the hand and we went one dip like this. And then we did another dip like that. And then boom, she fell out under the power of God. And, um, you know, it was amazing because when she got up off the ground, you guys, she had no more metal in her hip. God put a brand new hip in her, uh, you know, body. And she actually went to the doctors and the ones that put the metal in and they took x-rays and they were shocked because she had a brand new hip. Doctors verified, uh, you know, with, with a, 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 an x-ray to prove everything. And what was amazing about it was this, is that the next night after that woman got healed, um, this woman's friend was in the meeting and she stood up and said, I got a testimony that I want to share. And, and she said, remember the lady last night who got healed of the hip and the metal rod dissolved out of her body? She said, listen, that was my friend and I brought her to these meetings. And, um, and I want you to know this. She didn't believe in healing before the meetings. In fact, this was her prayer in the car before we actually um, came to the meeting. She said, God, if you're really real and this healing stuff is real, would you heal me so I can dance again? 
Come on, somebody. How many know that's the love of God? And, and, and you know, uh, one of the things I want to tell you is why do we need miracles, signs, and wonders? Why do we need the healing power of God? Because, listen, one of the things that Jesus did when he was on the earth, he went about doing good. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says how the uh, Holy Spirit anointed Jesus of Nazareth, and he went around doing good, setting all who oppressed the devil. And uh, it says that God was with him. And, and, and so, listen, God wants to be with you. He wants to anoint you to set people free. He wants to anoint you to what? Release the goodness of God. If you've ever wondered what the purpose of the power is, here's what the purpose of the power is, is to release the goodness of God to a generation. And so listen, we're going to teach on that. We're going to uh, train you on that in these uh, you know, next four uh, parts that we do. In fact, we're going to look at the different um, you know, functions of healing. We're going to look at the laying on of hands and uh, you know, how, how God wants to anoint you to lay your hands on the sick and see them recover, see them healed. I'm going to give you keys to how to move in creative miracles and, and and also, we're going to look at different types of healing. We're going to look at healing in the atmosphere. We're going to look at... Um you know, special miracles. Like in Acts chapter 19, it says, out of the hands of Paul were taken handkerchiefs and aprons, and they were taken to those that were even demon-possessed, and they were cured that very, that very hour. And we're going to look at the uh, different aspects of authority and power, like um, the healing word that the centurion soldier's servant was healed from when Jesus made a decree, and he released that word. We're going to look at um, keys to activating you in the healing anointing and in the glory of God, and and, and listen, I'm excited because it, one of the things that, you know, the Lord has done is, is he has given us a, a ministry of healing and miracles, and we have seen it tangibly imparted all over the world. And in fact, um, I believe that he wants to activate that anointing, uh, you know, in this season over the church more than ever before because the harvest truly is ripe. It truly is plentiful, just like I read about at the beginning. And listen, there's about to be a great harvest, and what God wants to do is raise up the harvesters, and I believe that you are one of those. And so check out the next teaching. We're going to talk about the the anointing of the laying on of hands and how God wants to use you to uh, bring miracles, signs, and wonders to your workplace, your school, to your your community, to your church, uh, wherever you go, just like Jesus and just like his disciples. So we'll see you in a minute. Bless you.